Okay, so you said since 2008, the numbers have peaked. Why would you say that? Um, 2008, transitional period from when Korea went from a liberal government to a conservative government, which is still being continued on today. And so what happened when Lee Myung-bak first got in power, we started attacking these social safety networks and welfare programs, which started going into effect in 2007, 2008. If we consider that the highest rate of suicide by age group is senior citizens who very much largely rely on social welfare packages, you can kind of start to see how this political effect starts to affect them economically and make it Yeah, there's a huge stigmatization of mental illness, so people aren't getting treatment, and even if they do seek out treatment, they're they're facing a lot of um, backlash from the people around them, from the parents, from the friends, who kind of conceptualize people who go get mental illness treatment for mental illnesses or psychological disorders as crazy. So let me ask you a question: Does the government? pay for that kind of stuff? Uh, is it privatized? Um, are there enough clinics? Are there these systems set up to help people and they're not taking advantage of them? Or do they just really don't exist? The branch of psychology in which um, medication, medication and so on is involved, it is part, it is considered within your, um, it is, it is part of the Korean national health care, so you can get psychiatrical medication and so right. and Yeah, so when we're talking about things that these kids may need, mm -hmm. therapy, um, just counselors, just people right. who they can talk to about these issues and who can help them um, understand what they're going through. So people who can help them, for a large part, are not covered by health care. And usually sessions for a high-end therapist can go up to $500, $600 a session. Problem is most of them don't have time to go right, to these Right, because they're sessions. in the school till 10 p.m. And then they're also in Hagwons right. during the weekend, so they don't really have time to get this therapy. You know, going back to what you said about um, the hungry Tongchen, up until 1987, Koreans were known as the hardest working people in the world they worked seven hours a day six uh, no, i'm sorry seven days a week uh 15 to 16 hours a day and it wasn't until 87 that they went on strike to try and you know change their situation so i think along with that is embedded this mentality of working hard to get what you want and to get what you need. Your parents' parents did it, your parents did it, you are going to do it. You can do it, I got through it, they got through it. You'll be okay, just get over it. I feel like most Korean kids can relate. If you complain about your schooling to your parents, what they'll tell you is, I was your age. <laughs> I had to go five miles and In I- In the snow, up yeah, a mountain. yeah. We Carrying a, carrying a goat on my back and I got shot three times by North Korean snipers. They have these <laughs> giant, huge stories and they have their own struggle stories. And I guess in their perspective, they feel like, yeah. I can't understand why you believe this is hard compared to what, what I, I went through. through. Right, right. And I also feel that like Korea has experienced rapid growth within the last, what, 15? 12, 15 years? Because most people back then were farmers, so what they would do is they would take like uh, an egg from a chicken and they'd take it to a store and they'd be able to exchange that with like three notebooks and some pencils. So much has changed for us. Right. Um, so people basically remember being dirt poor and that feeling of not having and then the feeling of having and not wanting their children to ever go through what they went through. That's true. So this put to, like you said, never be hungry again. It's embedded in their mind. Yeah, you can start to see, see in these conservative um, circles that these people who are in their late 20s, early 30s, are starting to either get married and have kids mm -hmm. or so on and so forth. And they're talking about the hunger junction. They're talking about something that 
truly isn't isn't really theirs in concept. Right, it was their right. parents' generation, and yet they're talking about it already. Like kids, younger kids these days lack this kind of mentality. We need to bring this back, and we can start to see how it's being followed through the generations and, and we can also see by the high rates of depression of high rates of suicide within students how this is becoming a very toxic mentality what can korea do to help this suicide problem first thing is there needs to be more support for senior citizens a lot of them aren't in this aren't in a situation where it's healthy for them a lot of Senior citizens are living alone in very poor quality houses and are not economically stable. And if you can, if you can lower the rate of suicide in senior citizens by increasing, say, the quality of nursing homes, that's basically catching about 40, 50, 60 percent of the total amount of suicides in Korea. So it's not the young generation that, like, because that's what we think back in the West, all these young kids just jumping from the bridge and killing themselves because they didn't get into college or they are not the main people committing suicide. Elderly and then okay. it's the it's people in their 30s and 40s have gone through this education system okay. and have developed suicidal tendencies. First the education system and then the high pressure work environment which is too high stress. Common issue is called yagen or late night work. You um, don't go home till the boss goes home. Yeah you're not a, <laughs> You don't go home until until your higher ups go home. And first. he's sitting in the office watching TV. Exactly. So <laughs> they say they say it's a nine to six, and by the labor laws, you can leave whenever you want past six. But if you do, and your boss is still there, it's not a pretty ending for you. Also, have a family in which the basic interactions, where communication. Right has also been broken. broken down. And then you have a schooling system in which kids aren't allowed to relax. They have to go through a high pressure system. Mm -hmm. And they also don't have interactions with their friends or their family and support. Right. And kids need to be kids. You were telling me last time, it's after they get into college that they commit suicide. They lose their sense of goal. The whole system builds up to this test. Everything they know mm. from elementary school because there are special middle schools competitive to get into, uh -huh. which lead to get better high schools, which lead to better education. So we're start, we're talking about kids starting from like the second grade. Or being pushed to the to final goal. Right. The, the final goal is the test. And so you would think that once they're done with the test, mm -hmm. they would be really happy. But the most common reported feeling is they feel lost. They they no longer have a goal to orient themselves towards to because their whole life has been built around taking this test and doing well on the test and suddenly they don't have that anymore. A lot of people in suicide notes by analysis write that they lost their purpose in life. There Especially needs to be more welfare systems set up for the elder. More stricter labor laws uh -huh. for a less um, high stress, high pressure work environment and basically the high pressure education system. Right. There needs to be more limitations on the private education sector and there also needs to be reforms on the schooling system and they're doing this right now. I want to include a suicide hotline number because foreigners who come abroad commit suicide. It happens. It happened last year. One guy in my program killed himself. Some people come over here trying to escape things or their problems back home. They find that they're running into themselves. Coming abroad, it's going to be even that much harder. You have the language barrier. You have tons of people that you don't really know. You don't have such a support system here. So if there's any way that we could help. I mean, I, I I don't know, I'm leaving Korea, but <laughs> the best I can do is put in a suicide hotline number and hope that if you are watching this video and uh, you need someone to talk to about things you're facing or dealing with here, you can reach out to someone, anyway. What does it say? Hold on. Grasping things at the Grasping root. things at the root. I like that. Um, it's been such a pleasure and I really wish that I could just hit you up on so many other topics, man. I mean, this dude knows what he's talking about. This is one deep dude.
Man, you ought to start a channel or something. I've been considering it, but... Man, you should. Okay, um, would you say your uh, Twitter one more time? Yeah, you can find me at Twitter at E-Z-O-E-R-I-Z-O. -E and also, I run a Korean feminist reading group at S O L Y E O S H I F. Okay. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming out and doing this. Thanks for having me. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.